Welcome to Let's Up Powerball, episode 60, Testing Wires for Fusion, part 2. In the first part, part 1, I looked at a simple way of testing your fuse wire to see if it would blow when you wanted it to blow. This time we're going to look at a way of testing your fuse wire um, to see if it will not blow when you don't want it to blow. Uh, and so we've got an equally simple circuit. We've got a, a multimeter set to current connected to an 18650 battery which connects to a piece of heating coil wire connected in series with the fuse wire you're testing and, uh, and that's it. Um, now to get yourself a nice piece of heating coil wire the cheapest, simplest way that I know is to get a hairdryer and pull it open and here's what I prepared earlier and inside you will find a motor and switches but also this lovely piece of heating element. It's a coiled wire that will heat up when you pass current through it which um, is useful for us because we can use it to test whether or not the fuse blows at say one amp or half an amp or, or whatever. So let's build this up. Here's the multimeter connected to a battery. Oh, that out of the way. Multimeter battery connected to one end of the element. One end of the element there. Then the meter goes to a piece of fuse wire. So I'll wrap that round there to get a nice good connection. And one more piece of heavier gauge wire to connect this. And wrap that a few times. So that is about the length of wire that I will be using in my power wall. And in, in fact, uh, that's what I used previously. So that should all work quite nicely. Then the other end of that connects to one of these. Let's do this one. And that can go out of the way. So, let's give ourselves some information here. Now, the way these are wired, um, this particular one is wired, it's got um, two sets of, it's got a coil that goes around here and then comes out here and here and here and here goes all the way to the end and then goes all the way back to that one so every second one is this one here so that should be right so that should be about right if we jump all the way to is it there? no it's not there, it's that one ok so we've got 0.12 amps flowing through here and therefore also flowing through the fuse wire and of course it's fine there's no heat there there's no heat there because it's all just a bit too wimpy so let us jump to here now we've got a third of an amp and in a in a power wall situation you're normally not driving these cells much more than an amp um, and a third of an amp might actually be quite normal for your situation but um Let's go and jump over here. So now we're running a lot across a lot smaller section of wire and we're up to 0.8. So now we might as well aim for. Let's see if we can find. There we go. Ooh. Basically, one amp flowing through there and ooh, it's starting to warm up. The fuse is absolutely fine because it's not designed to be a heater, whereas this is. Um, so, at one amp, that fuse wire is functioning perfectly well. Let's put 
push things a little. Let's imagine that you've just turned all your appliances on and your power wall is um, working really hard. So you've turned the toaster on and the microwave oven and everything else you need. Um, so we're up to just about 2 amps. There's a bit of warmth coming out of there. That is absolutely fine. So for the sake of interest, let's see how far we can push this. Let's go to let's go to four amps. So that the fuse is doing fine. I'm not sure if you can see a little bit of a glow coming on there, so that's doing its heating thing. Four amps. This fuse wire is fine. And that's about I can't imagine in a power wall scenario using more than four amps. But for the sake of completeness, we might as well go five amps. And then while we're here, we might as well do a disaster test, assuming that we have some kind of short circuit. Let's see what happens. And it blows. So, which is exactly what we expected it to. So that is a very simple way of testing whether or not your fuse wire is going to cope with the load that you are likely to have on your power wall. There are other ways of testing of course. Um, one of them is to use your uh, IMAX V6 which um, also has a has a, a discharge mode. So you can set the dis discharge current and so what you would do here is go away with all that uh, if we grabbed this wire here let's take this out of the way, out of arm's way let's say we've got that and we've got this Let's say you wanted to test, you couldn't find yourself a hairdryer, so, but you do have one of these lying around, um, you can hook up, let's get that nicely wrapped, okay, so that's good. So then you can set the current to whatever you like up or down, let's say 1 amp, and run that, and here comes 1 amp flowing through, 1 amp, flowing through the fuse, and it's absolutely happy. Um, so that's another way of testing whether your, your fuse wire is going to be fine for the load you've got. Um, and there you go, two easy ways of doing it. Um, thanks for watching, hope that's been helpful to you, catch you next time. Cheers. One of the nice things about hair dryers is they come in all sorts of cool funky shapes um, and if you go to a, a junk shop you can sometimes find um, nice old 1980s ones and these are fantastic for making into toys for your kids, um, which is what I did with this one. I added a, an Arduino Nano, I think, or Uno, one of the small Arduinos in here, um, and a pot, and a whole bunch of LEDs, and a speaker, so you can play with that. That's the one that my son likes to annoy me with. Um, so, hair dryers, really cool. If you want to know how to open them up, uh, I've got a video from a few years ago showing how um, to open pretty much any hair dryer. Cheers!